So we have a case of fake doctors, the white savior complex, and dead children. Hmm, how does all of that correlate? First, I'm gonna go and show you this tweet and then we're gonna get into the articles that I have presented, okay? So this tweet says right here, it says white supremacy at its peak is a white woman moving to Uganda, uh, posing as a fake doctor, running a fake clinic, having hundreds of Ugandan babies die under her quote unquote care, then being platformed in a docuseries because her intentions were good, sad. What docuseries are you talking about? Save Your Complex is going to be on HBO. Y'all, 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 y'all. It is not currently out yet. Um, and I'm actually put it up real quick right here where it says Save Your, Com uh, Save Your Complex is one season. It's just a documentary. It's going to be coming out on the 26th. So in about eight more days from when I'm recording right now. Um, so we're going to get into it because this stuff is wild, y'all. It is... Whew. it's upsetting and is extremely wild. Let's get into it. it. says the horrifying true story behind HBO's Savior Complex. The documentary traces the story of Renee Bach, a, an, an American evangelical missionary and the nonprofit she ran that has been accused of providing unlicensed and allegedly deadly medical care to Ugandan children. Yeah, it gets crazy. So who is Renee Bach? Okay, or Bach, I think it's Bach. So who is Renee Bach? Uh, Bach was a homeschooled missionary who had arrived in Uganda at the age of 19 and started an NGO with money raised through her church in Bedford, Virginia. NPR reported that Bach had first begun missionary work as a teenager in 2007, taking a mission trip to Jinja, an Ugandan city uh, that had become popular among American evangelical charities. By age 19, Bach reportedly felt a desire desire to return to Uganda and start a charity set up a charity in 2009 Bach found it serving his children a charity um, obscenely de dedicated to providing nutrition for malnourished children and families in the impoverished regions sur uh, surrounding Jinja. She also began a blog documenting the charity's work, often narrating events that placed her at the center of seemingly heroic, heroic acts of savorism. Oh, yes, I'm coming here and helping these Negroes out. Yes. Oh, all right. So the big question, ding, ding, ding. What did she allegedly do wrong that was portrayed within the documentary series that has yet to come out? Bach allegedly went far beyond just providing nutritious food. However, her blog, which was submitted as evidence in later court cases against her, seemed to document her providing unlicensed medical care to Ugandan children in her care despite having no medical training or experience. Imagine you just broke your toe, your right toe, right pinky toe, you just broke. You go to the doctor, you're like, I need somebody, I need somebody, and you just got somebody that just walks in wearing what I'm wearing. Mm. Oh, girl. Yeah, let me see that toe. Here, come in the room with me. I'll, I'll, I'll patch it up for you. You'll be like, oh, who are you? Where's your license? Because you don't look, you don't look any bit of a doctor. That's what this lady did. Only difference is she put on a white coat. Okay. And some other stuff, if you know what I mean. But let's continue the new yorker reported testimony to the effect that staffers at the charity including a gardener who testified that bach essentially posed as a doctor what was his name dr love a uh, black dude he was like what was he like 25 years old he was pretending to be a doctor and all these women went over there and they were like oh my god da, da, da. Then you found out he was a fraud okay she dressed in a clinical coat often had a stethoscope around her neck on a daily basis, I would see her medicating children. That's equivalent to me with no medical knowledge or experience or expertise. Going up into an ER and be like, yeah, give me Susan. I, I get, where's my sutures at? Let me go and patch her up real quick. Okay. Mm -mm. 
No, no, no. A former volunteer, registered nurse Jacqueline Grace Kramlich, told ABC News what she witnessed uh, Bach do. Among her allegations were that Bach performed medical procedures like inserting catheters, that's help you pee, and it goes to the little thing, attach it to your pee hole, drawing blood, performing transfusions and injections, prescribing and administering medications and more, all without paying attention to basic health, safety, and hygiene guidelines. I'm sure a lot of these people end up dying from just cross contamination that was going on. Two, do you even know where the pee pee hole is? And you over here inserted some catheters up in there? Did they even need a catheter? Okay, do you even know how to draw blood? No, I don't think you do. Do you know how to do it without popping a blood vessel? You can't just be sticking holes up in people's veins and stuff without doing it properly. Y'all, you did transfusions and you have no medical knowledge? Girl, I went on Google. Ooh, I went on Google. I know. I, I, I know. That means I'm a lawyer then. Just give everybody a degree. Let's continue. Kremlich, the, the nurse who's telling people like, okay, this is what was happening, also alleged in her testimony that Bach overrode, overrode nursing staff's decisions and didn't believe Ugandan doctors knew what they were talking about believing she had more knowledge because she looked things up online on the Googles on Bing. At least 105 of the children treated at her center died. You murdered at least 105 because you, you want to be the white savior. Ooh, let me help these Negroes. Yes, let me help them out. Cause they're more, they're inferior. Let me go and help them out. And then, I mean, if you die, you die, you know, cause that's what happened. You murdered these people. You killed them. Wow. You got the doctors. Y'all don't know what y'all talking about. Because y'all black. Because I could tell. I can guarantee you if they were white. She was like, oh, okay, that's what you think. But because they're black. Uh-uh. You don't know what you're talking about. Mm-mm, girl. Mm-mm. Okay. Um, so. Now we're going to get into what really happened to her. What eventually happened to her. In 2015, Ugandan officials closed a facility. NPR reported that the center did obtain the health license in 2014, but it expired and it was only issued a license for basic output care in any case. But in 2019, the first civil case was filed against Bach on behalf of the mothers of the two children who died after receiving treatment. Okay. In 2020, the Guardian reported that the case was settled out of court without admitting liability box organization agreed to pay 35 million ugandan shillings oh that's a lot of money y'all which is only 9400 dollars usd you murdered two kids in this case and their lives are only worth 94 okay to each woman Another another lawsuit was filed soon after, this time on behalf of the four other families families whose children died at the center. So where is she currently in 2023? The second case filed in 2020 had not had any recent updates. Bach, meanwhile, returned to Virginia and told multiple outlets that she has no plans to return to Uganda because they don't want you back and they'll probably murder you if you come back. Are you kidding? And this is what, well, let me just continue. Uh, she has no uh, stuff. She doesn't want to go back and says the New Yorker also notes that she has two daughters, two of whom Sela is a Ugandan child whom Bach adopted after she was brought, uh, after she was brought to the center. So did you adopt her you know what i mean did you i mean everything else you've been doing has been a lie and it's been phony did you actually adopt this kid did you steal this kid you know what i mean in in the way that you were treating everybody else you probably gonna be treating this kid like ish and this kid needs to get far away from you okay but here's the thing that's why i brought this tweet up from earlier now you know everything that you know. 
listen to it again. White supremacy at its peak is a white woman moving to Uganda, posing as a fake doctor, running a fake clinic, having hundreds of Ugandan babies die under her care, then being platformed in a docuseries because her intentions were good. Now, my question is this, okay? If she did all of this, why is she not arrested? Because if she did all this to white people, other white people, let's say she went to Sweden. Let's just say Sweden she goes to, or Norway. She goes and does this Scandinavia or something. You know what I mean? Let's say she goes and does this to those people. You think that she would be getting off on this? One, they wouldn't need you because, I mean, their stuff is really good over there anyways. But still, uh, they're not they're not really impoverished like that. I don't think they're impoverished like that really at all. I mean, they got some, I mean, they got really good, uh, you know, living over there. But regardless, you don't think that this would be more like, oh my God, oh my God, what's going on? What's happening? How is this even possible? You need to be jailed. But she's in Virginia now living her best life but you just murdered over or assisted in murdering over 105 children and you're not being persecuted you're not being extradited back to uganda to serve prison time or anything y'all so this actually kind of reminds me of a piece that i seen on vice and it was about it's like these little kind of thank you congratulation video things that Chinese people love doing for some reason where they'll have like a little black African kid and he'll be like thank you thank you good luck on your exam or something like that it's like these little telegraph kind of things and it's like where are these kids coming from maybe like well Alex how is this even relevant because the kids were saying these black kids were saying in Chinese like black is ugly black is stupid IQ of zero because they were saying it in Chinese and they had a Chinese dude come over to have these kids do this he was making time I mean this dude was killing it he was making so much money off of these old telegram things um but these kids were over here saying this crazy stuff and what what was interesting because people know I mean if you don't know Chinese you don't know Chinese you know uh, what you don't think I speak Chinese Oh, you don't think I speak Chinese <laughs> for my Pink Panther people? <laughs> if I don't speak Chinese, then then what are we doing here? <laughs> oh, but anyways, so that was one of the things about that, you know. So he went and he was putting like the subtitles of what it was in a positive way, but that's not what they were saying. That's not what he taught these kids to say because he was supposed to be there to help them learn Chinese and all this, but he wasn't doing that. Okay, he was taking these kids out of school too. Okay, and paying them like 25 cents a day or a dollar a day, something like that, which wasn't anything. So, the reason why everyone knew about it is because you had some good Chinese people with the dang conscience who was saying, that's not what they're saying. They're saying these subtitles are saying one thing, but what I'm hearing, these kids are saying something else and everyone else were like, oh, what are you talking about? What are they saying? Saying black is ugly, we're idiots, our IQ is zero, we're stupid. They're like, that's not, this ain't something else, okay? So that was one of the things that immediately popped in my mind. You go there, I'm gonna help them out, I'm gonna help them out, I'm gonna help them, woo! But you didn't really go there to help them. You went there for your own personal gain. And with this Asian dude, he was a failure up in China. He was, he was one of those people where you would be bringing dishonor to your family because this fool, he just, he didn't have it. You know what I mean? Um, so it was one of those kind of things that went about. He just didn't have it. He, he was a loser, essentially. You're a loser. You know, <laughs> it was one of those kind of things. Venom for everyone who's asking. <laughs> um, but it was one of those kind of things. So that's what I'm thinking with this. Uh, you probably weren't really all that, you know, or you, you thought you were hotter than you really were. And you weren't really all that. And then you're like, well, let me go and do something so I could feel better about myself. 
and then you go here and then you end up murdering children and you get away with it only because of your skin tone you know so let me know what you all think about this story right here hey i greatly appreciate if you could support me simply go to ebay.com in the search bar type in latrice limited click on shops and then support me i have a wide variety of items on there many of my own personal latrice limited items such as candles bath bombs soaps essential oil blends lingerie robes so much stuff i even have men's ties and comic books on there definitely support me and do not forget to like and subscribe thank you